Quark, uh, MD, and I have a prime of life disease called MSA, multiple system atrophy. He is such an enthusiastic father and grandfather, um, and he was such, um, such a caring and loving doctor that you know, he, in, in the prime of his life, he's, he has all of that taken away. My dad worked as a child neurologist, specifically kids who had really challenging lives ahead of them with the diseases that they were suffering from. He mostly worked with children who had epilepsy. One day I was in with the patient and uh, this was a, a, it was a tough case. And it, it took me most of the afternoon to figure out what was wrong with this kid and how we're gonna help her. Uh, and it was only then that I realized or that my boss was also a neurologist, a child neurologist, realized that it wasn't just a tough case. We noticed first my dad was kind of slurring his speech. He was dropping things. There was a, a bit of a tremor. His depth perception was certainly affected. There was a, his gait was clearly changing. He fell getting out of the car into the parking lot. He was bleeding, and he really wanted to play it off as if nothing was happening. I made a list of symptoms. The REM sleep disorder was a very clear symptom that something was wrong. He was flailing about so much. One night, I recall, I was crying because I got socked in the jaw, and it was really bad. Um, he would bark or yelp, uh, much like students I'd had with Tourette's had done. I was willing to go anywhere to get an answer to this. I made an appointment for him at Pennsylvania Hospital. I walked in convinced that it was either Parkinson's, which is not a wonderful thing to have, but your quality of life can be decent for quite a long time. Or I thought it might be a brain tumor. Maybe perhaps that was it. And even that, all right, you go at it, you attack it, you figure out a strategy. He walked in, she did it, we were with her for two hours. In part, I think, because she felt he was part of the family of neurologists. As the examination wore on, she looked at James and said, I think you know what this is, don't you? I said, would you say this is MSA? And she agreed that it sounded like it to her. This was this hopeless diagnosis. I didn't know where to turn. And we left there with a fistful of papers that contained uh, orders for many, many different blood tests. We went directly there because my approach was, okay, let's do this. Let's find out. Let's find out everything we can. Maybe this isn't it. And we were both pretty numb. James was acknowledging what he had. A degenerative neurological disorder was like a nightmare for him, that he dreaded that kind of, like he, that was his worst case scenario. I've had injuries uh, and uh, I can't lift him. And there have been times when I've had to. It's said to be much harder for the caregiver than it is for the one who's about to, who's looking down the barrel of a gun. When someone in your family gets this sick, the whole family gets sick. The rest of us aren't falling down, the rest of us aren't dropping things. 
But the pain runs through the entire family. It runs through your circle of friends. It runs through your neighbors. It touches everybody whose life you touch. I know how deeply this affects our children. My automatic response is to try to protect them. I can't protect them from this. I can't stop what's happening. I can't save them from losing their father. He has so much more he can give to my son, but when my son's ready to receive all of those things, he won't be able to. I knew I wanted my dad to be at my wedding. So we got married pretty quickly so he could be a part of it. I got to dance with him. And I remember thinking that that was going to be something I lost. I want to live till I'm a hundred or in my 90s. He's holding out hope that maybe there's something that's going to find a cure for what he has. Um, but I think ultimately he really believes strongly that, that people can help and that research and effort um, can solve problems like MSA. We need help. There is no research going on at all. So there is absolutely no hope for anyone with MSA right now. There is nothing. No clinical trials, nothing. You do really find yourself like missing that person. Um, even though they're still here, you just like, you miss who, who they used to be. Clearly, more work needs to be done on this because people are being struck down by this terrible, terrible illness. Thank you.